For the next two weeks, my special guest is Gabi Barke, an archaeologist from Jerusalem. Now, Dr. Gabi Barke, Mount Moriah is a famous mountain in Jerusalem with a rich history. First of all, what is its history? That would be difficult to summarize in a nutshell, but uh, Temple Mount is a high mountain crowning uh, the northern edge of the ancient spur upon which uh, the most ancient part of Jerusalem was built. The uh, ancient core of the city is now outside the old city of Jerusalem and at the moment the Temple Mount or Mount Moriah lost its shape as a mountain and we instead of ascending it we descended from most parts of the city. It is also stuck in a corner of the old city of Jerusalem because the nature uh, of the city changed and the outline of the city changed uh, through the generations. The Temple Mount was the highest peak of the city and from the 10th century BC, approximately 3,000 years ago, it was the Acropolis of Jerusalem. It had an agglomeration of official structures built by King Solomon uh, which was crowned by the construction of the temple uh, built by Solomon, described in the first book of Kings, in the second book of Chronicles, in the Bible. Now, uh, that structure of the temple uh, gained more and more significance uh, during the time of the Davidic dynasty, and uh, towards the end of first temple period, uh, the ideology concerning the temple changed and it became the only legitimate uh, place of worship for the Israelites and Jerusalem and the Temple Mount instead of being a geographical location upon the map of Palestine it became a uh, theological value and there is no more possibility to be a believer among the Israelites without having Jerusalem so Jerusalem became a uh, most significant part uh, of uh, Jewish belief from that time and on, and Temple Mount was the focus of that belief. So uh, the Temple Mount is soul, heart, and spirit of the Israelite nation and the uh, Jewish religion. Uh, in uh, uh, The first temple stood there for approximately 400 years. It was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 B.C., and uh, after its destruction, even after the destruction, uh, worship went on there as testified by Prophet Jeremiah. And uh, in 515, uh, after the uh, Jews were allowed by King Cyrus of Persia uh, to return to their homeland, uh, they re-inaugurated uh, the uh, temple. The second temple was inaugurated upon the same spot where the first temple stood. That building stood there, the second one, uh, from uh, the 6th century BC until the 1st century BC for uh, approximately six centuries. And uh, uh, then it was uh, rebuilt uh, from scratch by King Herod the Great, who also changed the Temple Mount and gave it its present day shape. Uh, so instead of a mountain, uh, we have a flat platform. Uh, he put the mountain into a large bottomless uh, uh, shoebox. Uh, the walls of the shoebox uh, being retaining walls behind which there is earthen fill, and thus uh, the mountain lost its shape as a mountain, and uh, as a result of the earthen fills, we have a pl flat platform and the present day shape and size of uh, the Temple Mount is the one given to it by King Herod the Great. Uh, presently, the Temple Mount occupies about one-sixth of the total area of uh, the old city of Jerusalem. It is quite a large area, the largest religious compound of the ancient world. It covers an area of 145,000 square meters. It is a gigantic area. In any case, the second temple, uh, as we still call it, uh, the Herodian temple, the temple of Herod, which is referred to more than 20 times in the New Testament, uh, that uh, temple was destroyed in uh, 70 of the common era by the Romans. 
and uh, since then uh, Jews are longing to the construction of the uh, third temple and uh, they are longing to the uh, Temple Mount occupying its important role again. The uh, place became uh, a pagan place of worship in the second century when a pagan city by the name of Elia Capitolina was built in Jerusalem. Then uh, when Christians ruled Jerusalem uh, from uh, uh, the fourth century and on, it was neglected and all the functions, all the beliefs and all traditions about the Temple Mount, they were transferred to the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, the edifice built by Emperor Constantine. The uh, Temple Mount and Jerusalem were conquered by the Muslims in uh, uh, 638 of the Common Era. Uh, the army of Prophet Muhammad, short time after the Prophet's death, was led by Omar ibn al-Khattab, and he had in his army some Jewish soldiers who told him about the significance of the place. Thus he built there a wooden mosque. Slightly later, after the Orthodox Caliphs of the uh, early Arabic period, uh, we have some of the dynasties of the uh, early Arabic period rebuilding the Temple Mount. The most important of them was the Umayyad dynasty, which stressed the importance of Jerusalem, and they stressed the tradition about uh, Muhammad going up to heaven from Jerusalem, about his night journey from the close mosque of Arabia to the far mosque, Al-Aqsa, the far one. Uh, and uh, that place was identified uh, with the Temple Mount. At the Temple Mount, the Umayyad dynasty, uh, Abdul Malik ibn al-Mirwan built the Dome of the Rock, which... Uh, um, dominates the Temple Mount until this very day, showing how the Temple could dominate uh, Jerusalem uh, in antiquity. Every uh, a picture of Jerusalem, every uh, aerial photograph, every uh, map of Jerusalem, you immediately are attracted to the building with a golden dome, uh, which is uh, the Dome of the Rock built by Abdel Malik. Actually, he built it as a replacement of Solomon's Temple. Uh, the building was not built as a mosque because the mosque was built by his son, Al-Walid, and that is the Al-Aqsa Mosque standing nearby. So uh, Jerusalem was named by the Arabs in the beginning Beit al-Maqdas, uh, which means place of the temple. Uh, Jerusalem's temple was very significant, and the uh, literature, uh, which is named in praise of Jerusalem, Al-Fadil al-Quds, in Arabic, um, uh, focuses upon uh, Jerusalem being the place of the temple. Uh, it's very interesting to to see new tendencies of temple denial among Arabs today. In any case, uh, the uh, existence of the two uh, major edifices upon the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, characterizes the Temple Mount for centuries. That is to say, from the early Arabic period, Umayyad dynasty's time, through the later dynasties, until the Crusaders, uh, and even after the Crusaders in the Ayyubid, uh, Mamluk, Turkish, Ottoman, uh, British, Jordanian, and Israeli rule until the 90s. In the 90s, as a result of the deplorable Oslo Accords and the... Uh, uh, negotiations between uh, Israeli authorities and uh, Yasser Arafat, uh, the Temple Mount changed its status. And instead of two edifices of uh, the Muslims upon the Temple Mount, uh, there are changes because uh, the Islamic uh, religious trust, the Waqf, which is in charge of uh, daily matters upon the Temple Mount, feared that uh, Israelis may uh, have some claim uh, and sovereignty may be upon the Temple Mount, they began digging like mad and uh, changing uh, the uh, status of the Temple Mount. And today, instead of two major edifices, we have already four mosques upon the Temple Mount. So are uh, archaeologists today actually allowed to investigate on the south of the, the Temple Mount? Temple Mount was never investigated archaeologically. There was never, ever a controlled excavation upon the Temple Mount. It is true that in uh, 
um, the 19th century there were some surveys allowed. Uh, they were done by British scholars as well as uh, uh, others, French, German. Uh, the major uh, British uh, expedition was that in the early 60s or mid 60s of 19th century, uh, led by Charles Wilson. Uh, the other one, two years later, 1867, led by Charles Warren.
For the next two weeks, my special guest is Gali Barke, an archaeologist from Jerusalem. Now, Dr. Gali Barke, Mount Moriah is a famous mountain in Jerusalem with a rich history. First of all, what is its history? That would be difficult to summarize in a nutshell, but uh, Temple Mount is a high mountain crowning uh, the northern edge of the ancient spur upon which uh, the most ancient part of Jerusalem was built. The uh, ancient core of the city is now outside the old city of Jerusalem, and at the moment the Temple Mount, or Mount Moriah, lost its shape as a mountain, and we, instead of ascending it, we descended from most parts of the city. It is also stuck in a corner of the old city of Jerusalem because the nature uh, of the city changed and the outline of the city changed uh, through the generations. The Temple Mount was the highest peak of the city and from the 10th century BC, approximately 3,000 years ago, it was the Acropolis of Jerusalem. It had an agglomeration of official structures built by King Solomon uh, which was crowned by the construction of the temple uh, built by Solomon, described in the first book of Kings, in the second book of Chronicles, in the Bible. Now, uh, that structure of the temple uh, gained more and more significance uh, during the time of the Davidic dynasty, and uh, towards the end of first temple period, uh, the ideology concerning the temple changed and it became the only legitimate uh, place of worship for the Israelites and Jerusalem and the Temple Mount instead of being a geographical location upon the map of Palestine it became a uh, theological value and there is no more possibility to be a believer among the Israelites without having Jerusalem so Jerusalem became a uh, most significant part uh, of uh, Jewish belief from that time and on, and Temple Mount was the focus of that belief. So uh, the Temple Mount is soul, heart, and spirit of the Israelite nation and the uh, Jewish religion. Uh, in uh, uh, The first temple stood there for approximately 400 years. It was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 B.C., and uh, after its destruction, even after the destruction, uh, worship went on there as testified by Prophet Jeremiah. And uh, in 515, uh, after the uh, Jews were allowed by King Cyrus of Persia uh, to return to their homeland, uh, they re-inaugurated uh, the uh, temple. The second temple was inaugurated upon the same spot where the first temple stood. That building stood there, the second one, uh, from uh, the 6th century BC until the 1st century BC for uh, approximately six centuries. And uh, uh, then it was uh, rebuilt uh, from scratch by King Herod the Great, who also changed the Temple Mount and gave it its present day shape. Uh, so instead of a mountain, uh, we have a flat platform. Uh, he put the mountain into a large bottomless uh, uh, shoebox. Uh, the walls of the shoebox uh, being retaining walls behind which there is earthen fill, and thus uh, the mountain lost its shape as a mountain, and uh, as a result of the earthen fills, we have a pl flat platform and the present day shape and size of uh, the Temple Mount is the one given to it by King Herod the Great. Uh, presently, the Temple Mount occupies about one-sixth of the total area of uh, the old city of Jerusalem. It is quite a large area, the largest religious compound of the ancient world. It covers an area of 145,000 square meters. It is a gigantic area. In any case, the second temple, uh, as we still call it, uh, the Herodian temple, the temple of Herod, which is referred to more than 20 times in the New Testament, uh, that uh, temple was destroyed in uh, 70 of the common era by the Romans. 
and uh, since then uh, Jews are longing to the construction of the uh, third temple and uh, they are longing to the uh, temple mount occupying its important role again the uh, place became uh, a pagan place of worship in the second century when a pagan city by the name of Elia Capitolina was built in Jerusalem then uh, when Christians ruled Jerusalem uh, from uh, uh, the fourth century and on it was neglected and all the functions all the beliefs and all traditions about the temple mount they were transferred to the holy sepulcher uh, the edifice built by emperor constantine the uh, temple mount and jerusalem were conquered by the muslims in uh, s uh, 638 of the common era the army of Prophet Muhammad, short time after the Prophet's death, was led by Omar ibn al-Khattab, and he had in his army some Jewish soldiers who told him about the significance of the place. Thus, he built there a wooden mosque. Slightly later, after the Orthodox caliphs of the uh, early Arabic period, uh, we have some of the dynasties of the uh, early Arabic period rebuilding the Temple Mount. The most important of them was the Omeyyad dynasty which stressed the importance of Jerusalem and they stressed the tradition about uh, Muhammad going up to heaven from Jerusalem about his night journey from the close mosque of Arabia to the far mosque Al-Aqsa, the far one uh, and uh, that place was identified uh, with the Temple Mount at the Temple Mount the Omeyyad dynasty uh, Abd al-Malik ibn al-Mirwan built the Dome of the Rock, which uh, um, dominates the Temple Mount until this very day, showing how the Temple could dominate uh, Jerusalem uh, in antiquity. Every uh, a picture of Jerusalem, every uh, aerial photograph, every uh, map of Jerusalem, you immediately are attracted to the building with a golden dome, uh, which is uh, the Dome of the Rock built by Abd al-Malik actually he built it as a replacement of Solomon's temple uh, the building was not built as a mosque because the mosque was built by his son Al-Walid and that is the Al-Aqsa mosque standing nearby so uh, Jerusalem was named by the Arabs in the beginning Beit al-Maqdas uh, which means place of the temple uh, Jerusalem's temple was very significant and the uh, literature uh, which is named in praise of Jerusalem, Al-Fadil Al-Quds, in Arabic, um, uh, focuses upon uh, Jerusalem being the place of the temple. Uh, That's very interesting to, to see new tendencies of temple denial among Arabs today. In any case, uh, the uh, existence of the two uh, major edifices upon the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, characterizes the Temple Mount for centuries. That is to say, from the early Arabic period, Umayyad dynasty's time, through the later dynasties, until the Crusaders, uh, and even after the Crusaders in the Ayyubid, uh, Mamluk, Turkish, Ottoman, uh, British, Jordanian, and Israeli rule until the 90s. In the 90s, as a result of the deplorable Oslo Accords and the uh, uh, negotiations between uh, Israeli authorities and uh, Yasser Arafat, uh, the Temple Mount changed its status. And instead of two edifices of the Muslims upon the Temple Mount, uh, there are changes because uh, the Islamic uh, religious trust, the Waqf, which is in charge of uh, daily matters upon the Temple Mount, feared that uh, Israelis may uh, have some claim uh, and sovereignty may be upon the Temple Mount. They began digging like mad and uh, changing uh, the uh, status of the Temple Mount. And today, instead of two major edifices, we have already four mosques upon the Temple Mount. So are the archaeologists today actually allowed to investigate on the south of the, the Temple Mount? Temple Mount was never investigated archaeologically. There was never ever a controlled excavation upon the Temple Mount. It is true that in uh, 
um, the 19th century there were some surveys allowed. Uh, they were done by British scholars as well as uh, uh, others, French, German. Uh, the major uh, British uh, expedition was that in the early 60s or mid 60s of 19th century, uh, led by Charles Wilson. Uh, the other one, two years later, 1867, led by Charles Warren, uh, who was a one of the pioneers and one of the most able people in the archaeology of Jerusalem. In any case, they collected uh, no pottery. They uh, just uh, documented structures upon the Temple Mount. They didn't dig at all upon the Temple Mount. It is also true that in 1927 there was an earthquake, a devastating earthquake in Jerusalem, which ruined the Al-Aqsa Mosque entirely. As a result of that, uh, there were excavations under the building uh, as part of the restoration of the building in 1927. Those excavations were carried out under the auspices of the British Department of, Arche of Antiquities of uh, the British uh, state of or mandate of Palestine. Uh, they were carried out under the directorship of Cedric Norman Jones, uh, a British able archaeologist, and uh, he didn't publish it. It seems quite amazing, really, that there's, there must be such a rich, rich history under there, but nobody's ever really investigated it. Yes, it is deplorable. It is deplorable that uh, Temple Mount, being the most important archaeological site in this country, and being one of the most uh, important cornerstones of Western civilization on the whole, it is uh, the, the starting point of uh, the Judeo-Christian uh, uh, traditions and beliefs. Uh, that place was never touched by the spade of uh, any archaeological expedition ever. That is very interesting also on, in the light of the fact that Jerusalem is the most excavated place upon earth. It is excavated constantly for 150 years, and Temple Mount is a kind of a black hole in the uh, history of archaeology. So are they, are they, is the WAF stopping people from excavating on there at the moment? Yes. Yes, very much so. Uh, the WAC uh, denies the accessibility to archaeologists and even uh, inspectors of the Antiquities Authority are not allowed to work upon the Temple Mount or to report about any damages. Uh, the situation is really de deplorable. In any case, uh, there were excavations around the Temple Mount but not upon the Temple Mount. Is that the, is the reason because if they find something, it will prove that there was a temple, a Jewish temple, and give more claim to the Israelis? I would say yes. I would say yes. Uh, the, the problem is even more serious. You cannot hold the stick in both hands. You cannot say, well, show me the remains of the temple, and at the same time say, well, I'm not going to allow you to find remains of the temple. You can't have that, and this uh, shows the uh, um, the, uh, the fact that the Waqf should not run things upon the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount is part of the uh, uh, city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is, at the moment, uh, well-known capital of Israel. It is under the sovereignty of Israel, so the state should take uh, uh, take measures. Uh, in order to uh, control the place and to imply the uh, law of antiquities as in any other spot in the country. This week is the second part of a conversation with Dr. Gabi Barke, an archaeologist from Jerusalem. I sat down with him and I asked him what's happening today on the Temple Mount as far as destruction is concerned. At the moment it is quiet. It is quiet, but in the 90s and in the early 2000s uh, there were major changes some of those changes are uh, significant and, uh, and uh, much damage was done. Uh, Temple Mount uh, witnessed uh, barbaric acts. Uh, the Waqf uh, behaved in the 1990s as a, an elephant in a uh, uh, china shop. Uh, the the uh, destruction is barbarous. Uh, the uh, um, subterranean 
uh, structure known as Solomon's Tables, though it has nothing to do with Solomon, it was not built as tables, but otherwise the name is okay. Uh, that building of uh, Solomon's Table turned into a subterranean mosque by the name of Al Marwani Mosque or Masalla Al Marwani. Now uh, the building uh, uh, inside the earth was lowered without any uh, checking of uh, the earth which was saturated with uh, ancient remains. Uh, infrastructure was uh, put into the uh, building which is an 11th century building in its present shape but it starts already in second temple period. Underneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque um, uh, there are passages uh, which led to the Temple of Herod. Uh, these uh, passages are intact, they are preserved very well and they have in their ceilings domes, uh, stone domes uh, which are carved with decorations which are the best preserved remains of Jewish art of Second Temple period from the time of Jesus. Uh, those uh, together with a pillar with a sculptured capital which is still there those were turned into a, another mosque, uh, the Al-Aqsa Qadima, the ancient Aqsa, as they call it. Uh, the uh, building uh, is now not accessible to scholars. Uh, many of the uh, subterranean uh, hollows of the Temple Mount were cleared from uh, the earth which was inside them, which could teach us a lot about the history of the Temple Mount. Uh, the Temple Mount is honeycombed with uh, more than 50 cavities, passageways, cisterns, and all kinds. Uh, the 50 is the number of the known one. There are others which are not known. In any case, those were uh, penetrated in the 1990s and early 2000s, and uh, we don't know actually what happened there. In 1999, the uh, peak of the atrocities happened when uh, uh, there was a request uh, which uh, gained permission uh, for an emergency exit for the illicitly built mosque uh, in Solomon's stables. Uh, so in November of 1999, bulldozers and trucks appeared on the uh, Temple Mount and for about a week they dug a gigantic pit uh, 12 meters in depth, 40 meters in length uh, and removed from the southeastern corner of the Temple Mount uh, an amount of more than 400 truckloads of earth with uh, uh, very significant archaeological remains within it and also destroying remains of structures which were there, remains of, uh, uh, of uh, archaeological significance uh, which all was destroyed and removed uh, from uh, that area. The earth was dumped upon the slopes of the Kidron Valley nearby. So were you able to actually go to that soil and check it out and see what history was there? Since uh, 2004, I got the license together with my colleague uh, uh, Zachy Zweig uh, for sifting through that material, and we are busy uh, since then doing the sifting. Uh, we have tens of thousands of finds from uh, the Temple Mount. Uh, significant uh, among them are finds from prehistoric periods which uh, were not known at all to exist in Jerusalem. The Epipaleolithic period, the Neolithic period. Uh, we have uh, finds from Canaanite, pre-Israelite Jerusalem. Uh, we have uh, finds from uh, the time of uh, the first temple. Uh, altogether, between 15 and 20 percent of the entire material found dates back to that time of first temple period. We have uh, remains of the Persian period, of the uh, uh, Hellenistic period, of the early Roman, late Roman period, early Christian, early Arabic, the Mamluk period, up till our own times. We have also large amount of uh, coins, about uh, 4,500 uh, coins. Uh, the uh, ancient coins are very significant. We have uh, a very important collection of Crusader coins. You should know that the Temple Mount was the headquarter 
of uh, the uh, Knight Templars. They are named Templars after the Temple Mount. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, coinage which was minted by the Crusader Kingdom of Jerusalem in the 12th century is very richly uh, represented. We have also a very significant ancient early coin dating back to the 4th century BC from the Yehud type. These are very rare coins uh, having the name of the province of Judah under the Persians, Yehud. Uh, we have large uh, amount of coins from the time of the Hasmonean dynasty, Herodian dynasty, the time of the Roman procurators, including significant number of coins uh, minted by Pontius Pilate, the uh, um, Roman procurator under whom crucifixion took place. Uh, we have a uh, large number of coins, uh, Islamic coins of uh, different uh, stages of the Islamic rule in Jerusalem. Very interestingly, we have also modern coins in addition to the ancient ones. And among them, most significant is a large gold coin of uh, Napoleon III from the mid-19th century. And all this was dumped over the edge of a cliff, and this must make you feel really angry as an archaeologist. Listen, uh, one has to uh, to benefit from uh, everything happening, uh, if one can benefit from the very serious uh, destruction and the very unfortunate events which took place upon the Temple Mount since the 90s. One uh, of the benefits is uh, the uh, ability of us to sift through this material. Of course, I would be much more uh, happy if I could find these objects in context, uh, in the proper depths in which they were, in uh, connection with walls and structures, and not just dumped outside of the Temple Mount. Uh, it loses about 90% of the importance, historical significance, as a result of the fact that it was removed out of context. In any case, the Temple Mount suffered as a result of these... Uh, atrocities carried out since the 90s suffered a lot. For example, the runoff rainwater in the Temple Mount was absorbed by the soil for uh, centuries. And as much of the area was paved, declaring it as open-air mosques to avoid anybody else having any ideas about anything else being upon the Temple Mount. As a result of these uh, flooring slabs, the rainwater was not anymore absorbed by the soil. And the rainwater searched a way to, um, to go. And it was absorbed by the walls surrounding the Temple Mount. As a result, uh, in the southern wall of Temple Mount in the year 2000, there appeared a bulge the bulge in the beginning was denied by all and it is like pregnancy you can uh, deny it at the beginning but then it further develops and everybody sees uh, the bulge uh, bulged out for uh, approximately one meter and it was about a hundred meters long and it aimed to cause a collapse of the entire southern part of the Temple Mount. So uh, the denial of the authorities, both Waqf authorities as well as the Israeli authorities, couldn't go on anymore. And a secret uh, agreement was reached between the uh, uh, former Prime Minister of Israel, Ariel Sharon, and the King of Jordan, uh, uh, Abdullah II, and the Jordanian team came over and uh, dismantled a part of the wall, uh, put in uh, uh, steel and concrete, and replaced the stones. Uh, so uh, things could still be done, and one could do also archaeology if uh, one would very simply sit down and talk about matters. The Waqf authorities, they have an archaeologist full-time archaeologist, Dr. Yusuf Natsi. I believe he's a good man. The problem is that uh, in uh, the society in which he lives, 
he cannot say, well, there was a temple upon the Temple Mount, and it would be interesting to find the remains. At the moment, the Temple Mount uh, has uh, Muslim edifices, but there were other people also in this country before Islam came over, um, which is uh, the history. He cannot say that. He is going to be shortened by one head if he says so. Uh, the uh, a man was uh, allegedly, I don't know, as far as I know, he was sent on holidays to Jordan when uh, the bulldozers uh, dug that uh, uh, atrocious pit in the southeastern part. I have here uh, in my possession a, uh, a booklet published by the Supreme Muslim Council, which is the Waqf. Uh, in 1935, a brief guide to the Haram al-Sharif, or the Noble Sanctuary. Uh, the name Haram al-Sharif, or the Noble Sanctuary, which was the name for the Temple Mount until the 90s, does not exist anymore. The Temple Mount is all of it Al-Aqsa. Why? Because of political reasons. In any case, in this booklet published by the Waqf, I read the following in uh, the in introductory uh, uh, chapter. It says the following. Its sanctity, Temple Mount's sanctity from earliest, perhaps from prehistoric times, is uh, well known. Its identity with the site of Solomon's temple is beyond dispute. <laughs> yeah. And since the 90s, we have uh, a temple denial. This was published by the Waqf, 1935. And then in 1935, the man who headed the Islamic authorities was nobody else but Haj Amin al-Husseini, who collaborated with Hitler and the Nazis. He headed the Islamic religious uh, authorities in Jerusalem, and this was published under him. Uh, so this is very, very strange to find the temple denial. The temple denial appears uh, since the 90s also among uh, radical European and Western groups. Uh, to my amazement, uh, they, uh, they come up with the idea that there is no Jewish claim to the Temple Mount, there was no temple, etc. This is uh, very, very dangerous. I think it is, it is bending of history uh, for political reasons. Do you think it's anti-Semitism more than anything? I think it is more serious than that. For the Holocaust denial, you have uh, eyewitnesses, you have survivals, you have uh, the perpetrators, you have films, you have the sites, you have the, the concentration camps, you have uh, documents, archives kept by the Nazis. Everything is there. Uh, for the temple, you don't have an eyewitness that could say, well, I saw the temple. You have enormous amount of literature. You have the Mishnah, you have the Talmud, you have the New Testament, you have the writings of Flavius Josephus, you have the writings of a uh, bunch of... Uh, uh, Greek and Roman historians uh, who tell us about the temple and all that in addition to the Bible uh, which tells us about the first temple in any case uh, the uh, temple denial is uh, something uh, uh, wishes it is, uh, is bad 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 uh, this is uh, something which is uh, um, I think uh, an attempt to use ancient history uh, for uh, current political uh, uses and it is totally non-legitimate. Now do you think the Ark of the Covenants could be under the Temple Mount or would it have just disintegrated by now? First of all I don't care. Uh, second uh, I think it to be uh, unimportant. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant somehow uh, inflames the imagination of uh, people in the West, especially of Americans. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant uh, became an issue maybe uh, since the movies of Indiana Jones 
Uh, and who knows, maybe it is still kept in uh, Fort Knox. Uh, in any case, uh, the Ark of the Covenant uh, stood only in the first temple. And the uh, second temple didn't have it already. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant uh, was made of wood and it was plated with gold. Uh, gold has a tendency of being always looted in antiquity and wood does not preserve. So uh, the, the uh, Ark of Covenant is not there and I think uh, mankind uh, does quite well uh, and uh, religions developed uh, since the loss of the Ark of the Covenant uh, 2,500 years ago uh, and uh, uh, I think that Judaism as well as Christianity as well as any other religion can go on developing without the presence of the Temple Mount and without the presence of the Ark of the Covenant and actually I, I, I don't need the uh, Ark of the Covenant uh, its significance for, was for its time now, with all the destruction that's hap happened on the Temple Mount, is there anything that you can do about this today? Yes, yes. I think uh, one should be aware of uh, the Temple Mount, of its significance, of its importance, of what happens there. Uh, the amazing thing that happened uh, in uh, Afghanistan when the Taliban authorities blew up the... Um, the Buddha statues in Bamiyan, uh, that uh, atrocity uh, touched the civilized world. On the other hand, the destruction upon the Temple Mount is regarded as part of a political problem between Arabs and, uh, and Israelis and part of the uh, Near Eastern conflict. No, it is, uh, it is something that you should uh, be important to any civilized person or around the world. Uh, Temple Mount is one of the cornerstones of Western civilization, and people should care about it. In the 2000s, uh, a committee for prevention of destruction of antiquities upon the Temple Mount was formed, uh, which tries to do lobbying and tries to do uh, to have more awareness uh, to the uh, destruction that took place upon the Temple Mount and to avoid further destruction. There are some successes, uh, there are some problems also. In any case, I think awareness is uh, most important. Any conscientious, civilized person in the world should care about the Temple Mount, should care about it. It is not possible to let extreme uh, Muslims and for that sake also extreme Jews uh, to take measures and to destroy uh, the cultural heritage of mankind upon Temple Mount. Okay, Dr. Kelly Mackey, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you.